Am I nervous? Yeah, I think I'm a little bit nervous uh, just uh, in this phase because of the risk associated with the launcher. I'm just eager to get it up there and tested and ready to serve the different markets we're headed to. To be honest, I wasn't thinking that this could happen to me, that I will be here witnessing a launch of a spacecraft that I worked on. You know, with, with this spacecraft, we're reaching people in, in South uh, America. We're, we're connecting people there. I, I, was, I wasn't thinking that I'll be here doing this. The journey to deliver this project, Aliyah 3, uh, for sure was not an easy one. It was, a, it was a journey that was filled with a lot of challenges. We had a lot to prove. At the time when we drew up this ambitious plan to grow the broadband business into at least 30 other markets, including our first entry into Latin America. Though I've been involved in launches for quite some time, each new launch feels like uh, the first one. A spacecraft that we have been working for three and a half years, I spent a lot of time uh, very close to it. Uh, the team in the PMO we spent even more time. Uh, they were kind of briefing the spacecraft in and out. For the whole company, this is a major thing. Very good journey, actually. It took us three and a half years. Fifteen national was embedded in this program. There was around four main engineers in the program, and we're very proud of them because they know the satellite inside out. Yes, yeah, so this is the launch pad for the Ariane launcher, where our spacecraft Alia 3 and the SES-14, our spacecraft, are mounted on top of. Not too long now, seven hours before launch. Weather looks good, hopes are good, and everyone's excited for a great launch. Changing something from designs on paper to something physical that's about to be launched into space, to stay there for at least 15 years, I mean, how can you describe that feeling? Yeah, 3 is, uh, is a special project because it had an input and contribution from so many people, from technical, commercial, our shareholder, our government. It's a milestone for not only Assad, it's for, for the country itself. The way that I feel now, I'm very excited. Uh, I want to speed the clock so we can launch. Uh, I think everyone here, especially uh, the people from UAE, uh, are very excited, uh, proud, uh, and uh, very happy to uh, witness this uh, milestone in our space program. Right now, I cannot but help to be in the moment. Right now, it's just we focus on really delivering this, uh, this uh, beautiful dream. About 30 minutes uh, until we launch. Uh, I'm getting really nervous. Try to be uh, cool, but uh, I'm really nervous and speechless. The constant pressure until launch is something that people, you just have to get used to when you work there and you just have to put it in your mind that you can relax once it's launched and tested in orbit. Attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité, top. Allumage de la Vulcan. Allumage de la paix, top décollage.
I receive a phone call. I pick up and I'm surprised to hear Yasat CTO, Marcus. He mentioned that they lost contact with the satellite a few minutes earlier, which was not alarming. These things happen, we know, and it could be many things. He's usually very measured in his words. So uh, what I heard him say is, it's not looking good, uh, Masoud. At that moment, I feel the time stopped. And thousands of thoughts were running in my mind. Are we, are we losing our satellite? Uh, many years of dedicated work goes in vain. Everybody was thinking, what's happening? So I come to give you some uh, information because uh, we have had an anomaly uh, on this uh, launch. Indeed, we lost contact with the launcher a few seconds after the initiation of the upper stage. I want to present my deepest excuses to our customers who have entrusted us one more time. Uh, everything, was <laughs> everything was at risk. Um, I mean, I'm smiling about it now, but it was very, uh, very stressful at the time because we're talking about uh, losing communication with the spacecraft that you spent approximately five years working on. So, you know, a, a lot of these uh, panic scenarios went in, in our minds, but I think we immediately refocused on looking at the facts and just coming up with a plan that's less emotional and more technical to try to figure out the problem because time was, was uh, very critical. It was fascinating, but uh, to be frank, uh, when we start hearing that there's a loss in signals, I mean, this is where we felt a bit uneasy. First, it was SES who managed to establish contact with their spacecraft. Shortly after that, we established uh, communication with the spacecraft, and we, we immediately knew that it was very healthy, and uh, everyone was extremely relieved at that point. To be honest, the experiences we got with Alia 3 um, is amazing, because even though you had encountered some um, issues with launch, it actually pushes you to learn more and it even challenges you to um, bring your creativity into actually finding a proper solution to recover the spacecraft. We saw the trust of the leadership in us on that day by giving us uh, the support and that something was just uh, out of this world and the way it was handled by our leadership, by, by the board of directors, by our chairman. We're in a good position today. Uh, it took a lot of work, but this wasn't the work of a uh, few hours post the launch or a few days post the launch. It's months after the launch, and a lot of good preparation uh, four to five years before the launch. And if you really wanted to go dig deep, it's the proper planning 10 or 12 years ago when this company was started. <laughs>